In this presentation, I'm going to show how to calculate and record interest accrued on a bond between its regular interest payment dates. Now we're going to account for this accrued interest from the last interest payment made on the bond through the accrual date or the reporting date of the bond on the financial statements. So let's go look at our example here. And in this example, I'm going to use the effective interest method for amortizing that bond. So we have issued a bond here with a $100,000 face value. It's for a five-year term or 10 semi-annual payments. And then the stated rate of interest on that uh, bond here is for 9% or 4.5% per semi-annual payment. And then the market rate of interest on that bond here is 8% or 4% per semi-annual payment here. And you can see here that since the market rate of interest here is less than the stated rate of interest, we've issued that bond at a premium. So we're going to amortize the premium down on that bond. Now our last uh, semi-annual payment was on that bond interest was an 7-1-X-2. And then our next interest, uh, regular interest payment date is going to be on 1-1-X-3. But we have to calculate the accrued interest here between those two payment dates on 11-1-X-2. So let's go up here and look at our um, timeline. So on 7-1-X-2, we paid our last semi-annual interest payment on that bond. Now our next semi-annual interest payment here would be on 1-1-X-3. But we have to record the interest uh, expense and the payable amount here on 11-1-X-2 for our financial statements. So you can see here we've got a four-month period here from 7-1-X-2 to 11-1-X-2 that we have to account for here. Now we can uh, determine the interest uh, payable on that bond here by taking the uh, $4,500 regular interest payment on that bond here times four sixth or four months out of the six months and that would be three thousand dollars here. Now going up here and calculating our market rate of interest on that bond here on the semi-annual payment for that bond here we would take the four percent the market rate of interest for that semi-annual payment times four of the six months here or four sixth for 2.66 uh, market rate of interest on that bond. All right, let's calculate our interest payments on that bond. And here we're going to use a amortization table to do those calculations. And we'll be using the effective interest method here. So let's review our effective interest method here. Well, we start out with a bond carrying value here of $104,100. That's what it, uh, it's carrying value at its issue date here. And then we go out and we calculate its first uh, premium here on 71X1. And that would be our interest payment amount here for $4,500. Now that's what we pay to the bondholders. And that's based on a semi-annual stated rate of interest of 4.5% on that $100,000 bond. So we get a $4,500 payment. Now we have to calculate the interest expense that we recognize on that bond for that period. And that's based on the beginning carrying value of that bond times the uh, semi-annual market rate of interest on that bond and in this case it was 4%. So taking 4% times $104,100 you get $4,164 of interest expense that we recognize on that bond. Now we subtract that amount from our interest payment amount to our bondholders and we come up with the amortization premium on that for that period. And in this case it was $336. So we subtract that from the beginning carrying value of that period and then we come up with our new carrying value uh, $103,764 and that would be at the interest payment date here of now let's just carry this out here and uh, make our calculations for the uh, interest expense that we recognize and the amortization amount for that 11-1 uh, reporting period. So we started out here with $103,052 uh, carrying value on 7-1. That would have been that interest payment date. And then we have to calculate the interest payment here for uh, the 11 uh, one date here. And that was what we calculated above here, our two-thirds 
of the uh, $4,500 interest payment here, and that was for $3,000. Now the interest expense that we recognize here was determined here from the carrying value on a 7-1 here of $103,052 times the 4% uh, semi-annual interest rate here at the market rate of interest, and we get up I'll get amount here of $2,747. So we subtract that interest expense for that period times the $3,000 interest payment that we made to our bondholders and we come up here with an amortized amount of $253. Now subtracting that from the beginning carrying value here on 7.1 x2 and we get a new carrying value of $102,799 and that would be at that uh, uh, interest payment date that we're calcul calculating here at 11.1 x2. So if we go down here and just look at our debits and credits, we have an interest expense that we debit here for $2,747. And then we have that amortized bond premium amount here of $253. And then we have a balancing credit entry here of $3,000. That's the payment made to those bondholders. All right, here's our journal entries for recording that accrued interest on the bond from the 7-1 through that 11-1 four-month period. So I have the asset and liabilities accounts laid out over here on the balance sheet, and then the interest expense that we recognize on that bond as part of net income on the income statement here. So our first entry here would be to debit or decrease that premium on bonds payable by $253. That's for that uh, amortization amount of the interest expense for that uh, period. And then we'd have another debit amount here to the interest expense that we recognize here of $2,747. And that was based on the beginning balance of that bonds care carrying value here on 7.1 x2 times the market rate of interest for that period which was 2.66% 2, 2 for $2,747. And then our balancing entry here would be to the interest payable amount here and that would be $3,000 and that would, 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 would be due as a payment to our bondholders. So we look here at our ending carrying value on 11.1 x2, it would be the bonds payable amount here of $100,000 plus the balance remaining in this premium to bonds payable here of $2,799. So the total carrying value here on 11.1 x2 would have been $102,799. So that's our, um, how we'd record this uh, accrued interest on this bonds payable for reporting that four-month period.